The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. 24 minutes to go until we get that opening bell. And boy, quite a market reaction after the initial reaction. Microsoft out with their earnings after the bell. You see the S&Ps. We're up there at a price point of about 54.87. We dive lower and we get it all back and then some. And Microsoft... I think you may see them go positive today. Seems like everything else is going positive. I'm not sure when they're going to be punished in negative territory when they're carrying the market higher right now. You got Microsoft down at 417. You dove down to 389 initially. Some of those headline numbers don't always tell the complete story. The story is always, what are you going to do for me in the future? Not what have you done for me in the past. And what they're going to do in the future is they're going to grow at a higher rate in the second half of their fiscal year. And that is because capacity is going to catch up with the demand and right now they cannot even meet the demand that they have going on right now which is pretty remarkable they spend a little bit more on capex but i guess it makes sense if you can't even meet demand with what the market wants in the azure cloud and you need to catch up with that demand and they're going to catch up and that's where you see that spike on the earnings call right there at about six o'clock you dive higher we're trading right now at 416.50 we'll get into that a little bit more in the program but aim right now and there's the action. Now, that's a one-minute chart. I had it last night. Let's put it to 15 minutes to see the real reaction. Yesterday, you drive lower. There's your reaction on the S&Ps to the lows, basically, of the intraday session, about 54.40. And then it's been a one-way trip in higher prices. And you see the pop there at about 6 o'clock on the conference call when they talked about, basically, where they're going to be in the second quarter. I'm trying to get the... Uh... So... Microsoft has about 30% constant currency revenue growth for the Azure falling short of the June quarter consensus view and its projection of 28 to 29% growth in the September quarter. That's what sent this thing tumbling, okay? You had 30% growth in the current quarter in Azure. You had 28 to 29% growth in the September quarter. But that's the key, okay? They are expected to improve in the second half of the fiscal year that just began. And that has to do with spending on CapEx and having a greater capacity to get things done. Okay, And they also say they know how to spend CapEx. The company has learned how to modify its outlays based on demand signals is what they talk about. And they even talk about in here, there's a quote, you want to talk about longer term. Okay, Capital spending is now a mix of infrastructure and technology. This is their CFO, Amy Hood. Noting that factors such as land and finance leases have longer term payoffs. Those things really will be monetized over 15 years and beyond. Pretty remarkable to think about. They're making bets right now that are really going to pay off in the next decade or potentially even longer. But that's what they got in there. Um, Azure does not have enough capacity to meet all of its AI demand, but capacity should improve along with revenue growth in the second half of the new fiscal year. Uh, their cloud computing revenue growth slowed in the latest quarter, and it's ex expected to slow further in the quarter they're in right now. That's what they talked about. They're going 28 to 9, but that's going to change. Yeah, and that's going to change coming up in terms of where they go in the second half of the year when they expect things to ramp back up. So the market likes that, and they're taking it higher, and they're taking everything higher with it, man. There's the NASDAQ 100, right? Now, this is why I say, how do you get the whole entire sector like this trading higher and you still got Microsoft and negative prices? I don't know. There's going to be a lot of pressure to the upside on Microsoft and they open, I feel like. In the second half of the new fiscal year, Microsoft expects Azure growth to pick back up again, fueled by a boost in its AI capacity. You can't knock the company for CapEx if they're actually going to deliver with AI with capacity when right now demand is outstripping capacity, right? The capacity increase will reflect the company's spending on AI infrastructure, which is expected to grow in fiscal 2025. I mean, CapEx is not a problem right now if they have a, a supply problem. They have more demand than they can supply 
not a big problem if you're spending money to meet that demand and it's going to come due in the next, what, six months? It's not like you have to wait that long for it. You get the Dow up 127 right now, not quite above where we were right coming into basically that close. And you got the Russell up by 13. Pretty remarkable, right? Check it out. We got NVIDIA shares. You talk about a pop, man. They dive lower yesterday. You get it all back and then some. NVIDIA, they're going to open up about 7% on the open at 111.51 for NVIDIA. You jump around to the other cloud providers. You got Amazon. This is why I say it. it's remarkable that Microsoft is not in the green. When you look at everybody else is in the green. Amazon, from 181 to 173, you're going to open right now up more than $2. Make it 184 right now for Amazon on the open. You jump over to Google. Google shares positive as well from about 171.86. You're looking at 174.58 for Google shares. Now, that's not the only story of the day. That was the story of the night, that's for sure. But what else do we have? We got jobs numbers. Private payroll out this morning ahead of the non-farm payrolls on Friday. Private payrolls. The slowdown continues. We're giving this market, giving the Fed everything it needs this afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Private payrolls increased 122,000 this month. The market was looking for about 150. Wage growth slowed to the smallest pace in 2021. That's, and that's, uh, where are we? We got another one too. Yeah. U.S. labor costs rise less than forecast, okay? And this is the Employment Cost Index, which is out this morning as well. 0.9% in the April to June period. That's a three-month period, okay? So, yes, it's 0.9%, but these are not monthly numbers. That's a three-month period, April to June, 0.9%. And if you go back, okay, this doesn't have the chart in it, but it talked about that it went up 1.2% to start the year, okay? So we just got 0.9% April to June. That's not reflected on this chart. This is the numbers all prior. 1.2% was the biggest number prior, so you could call that number almost a little bit of an anomaly, right? We get 0.9% in the most recent quarter, and you had numbers of 1% for the quarter, 1% down at about 8%. You did hit a 1.2% number for the beginning of the quarter, but then we're back down to 0.9% in terms of where you are. And you look at it on a yearly base, and I think we're at 4.1. Yeah, there it is. Compared with a year earlier, the employment cost index climbed 4.1%, the smallest annual advance since 2021. Yeah, and uh, Chairman Powell had said already, they were talking about in here, yeah, that the job market is no longer an inflationary force, he feels. And he's likely to give a similar assessment when he speaks at the conclusion of their Fed meeting later this afternoon. So no surprises coming into that Fed meeting, man. You get private payrolls. You get wages. We're going to get some more wages on Friday, of course. Um, but everything lining up pretty much with where it should be for the Fed to bring things in. So that is helping the markets as well this morning. And you see that little second lift right there at about 830 where we were trading at about 55.26 or so. Where's 8.30? There it is. 55.30, I'll call it. And you drive higher by about 15 points in the S&P. We're over anything we saw yesterday. You got tech stocks carrying it. You got Microsoft over the hump with some strong AI growth. And listen, these companies, man, if demand is still outstripping capacity in AI, then maybe the spend that we have going on and the market caps that we have rising are not going to be a problem. And that's what the market's reacting to right now. We check back in on Microsoft shares. Still trading at about 416.54 right now. Microsoft negative by $6. Almost everything else positive. We'll take a look at some other equities when we get back, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. With updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers, whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Tigers, it's back the annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until August 1st, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and they never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus from purchasing Tiger Dollars, now is your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until August 1st. So lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory, and that is to say the least. We got Meta shares right now. You're up by about four dollars, so they are up today after the bell for Facebook. And you jump over to Facebook in terms of what you're looking for. CapEx will be in focus as it usually is. Okay, analysts are expecting Meta to report nine point five billion dollars in capital expenditures this quarter, up fifty percent from a year ago. Now remember, they really had to trim things a year ago when things were falling apart, right? The full-year CapEx is seen coming in at almost $38 billion. Pretty remarkable. Net earnings per share expected to grow 59% this quarter. Revenue is forecast to rise about 20%. Now, when Meta was in the doldrums, man, all the conversations about PE and stuff like that, I mean, they still are in a pretty affordable mark in terms of PE, especially when you compare them to tech stocks, all right? They're up 31% this year. They've outperformed par peers in part because of their relatively cheap valuation, and they're still slightly cheap. They traded about 21 times projected profits, well below the NASDAQ 100's multiple of 25 times. Pretty remarkable. Now, they've pulled back with everything else right now. The market's looking for about an 8.8% move in either direction after their results. And what is interesting, take a look at the moves that this equity has had. This thing likes to move one way or the other. This is the stock seeing an average move of about 8% the day after earnings. And look at these numbers, man, right? Last quarter, it was down 10.8. The one before that, you were up 20.3. I think that might have been the one that came, they came with a 50 billion share buyback. 
in terms of delivering for the market. You talk about it, but you see the moves, right? We got a 13.9% move, a 23.3% move. We saw a 25% almost drop in Q3 of 22, 17, and then 26. Some of those big numbers back there in 2001, 22 as well. So you get Meta after the bell. CapEx will be in focus. $38 billion is what they'll be spending. Yeah, it was a $50 billion buyback in their first ever quarterly dividend as well. That was probably the pop that they got. But yeah, how are companies going to compete with some of these big tech companies on a grander scale when you have this type of CapEx cap, cap and you're building out basically server farms all over the world with AI chips, with computers running everything in their cloud computing? Pretty remarkable. Uh, going back to Microsoft for a quick second, one final comment that they were making on here in this article I was reading, which is interesting in terms of the CapEx for them, how they're building it, the difference of them building it out. I talked about how they're talking about land and finance leases having longer term payoffs to the years of almost 15 years sometimes. But they also mentioned that Microsoft is able to better balance between short term and longer term monetization because the AI transition is different than the cloud transition that they went through. Okay, with cloud, Microsoft staggered the rollout by geography because it didn't have ex as expansive a global customer footprint at that time. So they had to go geographic region by geographic region to be able to accommodate that and just not spend all the money at once without taking in any money. Now, that's not the case. They have the global footprint, and it can conduct a worldwide build-out is what is going on. Um, interesting, right? Yeah. <laughs> we live in interesting times, as they like to say, for sure. Uh, but Meta, they'll be out with their numbers after the bell. Look for that CapEx number, $38 billion for the year. Not bad. Meta investors have a laser focus on CapEx after the Microsoft letdown. And yeah, it was a letdown. But is it really a letdown if you have demand outstripping capacity and you're spending to make sure you meet that capacity and you're going to start growing at a faster rate than 30% in the second half of the year? Pretty remarkable. But yeah, they're going to have some big numbers on CapEx like everybody else, man. And yeah, so you had... One gentleman, Denny Fish, manages $7.2 billion. Janice Henderson, Global Technology and Innovation Fund, says the key question is whether Meta takes CapEx up even more. Yeah. The race is on, man. If you got demand outstripping capacity, you better be spending money because long-term growth is out there. And you better be cap capturing that long-term growth. The demand environment is pretty good. Revenue trends have been strong and the valuation is still reasonable. However, it sold off last quarter when things were pretty pristine except for capbacks, which shows how much investors are concerned about this. So Meta, out with their numbers after the bell, you're going to pop about $4 coming into that. You take a look at their last earnings, and there's where you were last earnings. We've just kind of been chopping around, right? Got up to 542.81. We're back to 463. You're almost right back to where you were coming into their last earnings event. But you see the volatility. You see the gaps. You go back two quarters, you were at 400. You jump over to NVIDIA shares. If everyone's spending money on CapEx, who are they spending it with? NVIDIA. One of those companies for sure. AMD, another one. Uh, but NVIDIA. You're up by $8, 111.71, quite a pullback from 140. It is interesting, you have that A to B, C to D completion, 125.69. You got up there, you chopped around, you pulled back, and we'll see. They're already talking about maybe this is the buying opportunity right now. You got all the way down to 103.73, and what is that? Almost a 30% pullback for that equity in the span of what? Yeah, just over a month. Pretty remarkable for NVIDIA shares. All right, what else we got going on? We talked about that. How about Boeing? They got a new CEO. They do. Kelly Ortberg, uh, a quote-unquote retired veteran of the aviation industry. Uh, he'll be in there. He's 64 years old. He's an engineer by training. They were probably going to go with an engineer. After all the flack they caught, right, of being run by a finance professional and everything's going down the line. Um. Yeah, so they like this one. We got a couple quotes in there. Best news for Boeing in a long time. That's an analyst over at Agency Partners. Boeing needs, yeah, a company doctor. I'd say so. Um, I was reading it. This guy's been in a couple different companies, I think. Where is he? Yeah. 
Yeah, he was so with the appointment, Orborg steps out of retirement and into the leadership role that many once expected him to play at RTX, the biggest supplier. Yeah, he ran Collins Aerospace. That's what I was looking for. Um, before shifting to an advisor role and F eventually an RTX's board. So they were thinking he might be there, but he's at Boeing. Rockwell Collins. He was a deal maker, striking his first major acquisition just 11 days after taking over as CEO. So we'll see. They got a new CEO in there. Boeing said it waived the mandatory retirement age of 65 for Ortberg, as it did in 2021 for Calhoun. What's the point of having those types of rules if you just keep bringing people in? And I'm not saying that's a good rule, but it's interesting. They have, they have a mandatory retirement age of 65, and they keep bringing in CEOs that they don't think that's for, but what, it's for everybody else? I don't know how that one plays. You jump over to Boeing shares, and they're up by $3 right now, 189 So the market taking that in stride off of the recent lows of 159 their last earnings. Pretty remarkable. All right, it's going to be an interesting one on the open, folks. We got the market in positive territory with the S&P up by 70 points, NASDAQ 100. Up 2.23% right now in the pre-market. That is quite a green bar. Check it out. 19,361 right now. We're coming back for the opening bell. And don't forget about Tiger Dollars, folks. Running through August 1st tomorrow. Check that out. We'll talk about that when we get back. But two days left in that Tiger Dollar sale for July. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got stocks open, and there goes Microsoft, man. You get a pop. We're negative by just two dollars. Make it three seven tenths percent in the red. We'll see if we get positive from Microsoft with the entire market. You jump over to Nvidia shares right now, up by eight point seven percent. The other numbers we didn't go over, obviously helping Nvidia, are AMD. They're up by nine percent. Quite a pop for them, up to one fifty seventy seven. So AMD, some of these companies, man, their data center sales more than doubled in a year. They sold over one billion dollars dollars of their MI300 chips during the quarter and its data center category surged 115% year over year. Pretty remarkable. They beat on earnings 69 versus 68. They beat on revenue as well. They expect 6.7 billion in sales in the current quarter. Just think the one they put up was 5.8, right? The market was looking for 6.61, so they're going to come in at 6.7 net income. 265 million versus net income of 27 million a year ago. They are just bringing it to the bottom line as well. And yeah, so that's going to help, of course, NVIDIA. And investors want to see AMD take market share away from NVIDIA with those big chips that they got and signal growth in its data center AI business. Earlier this year, AIMD said it expected $4 billion in AI chip sales this year. And yeah, it seemed like that would line up. If they're selling a billion in the quarter right now, and the market people are still ramping up CapEx for capacity to meet demand. Pretty remarkable, man. Market's open, and yeah. Look at that. AMD slight give back. Let's check around to some of those others. Remember, you get Amazon and Apple out with their earnings on tomorrow. Okay, so Amazon's up about $3.60, 1.9% right there. You jump over to Apple shares. They are positive by 1.3% right now as well. We jump over to Meta ahead of their numbers tonight after the bell, up by 1.2%. We're checking on Tesla shares, up by 2.4%. They get a little bit of a pop at the open. Now, this one's interesting, okay? I saw the article out there this morning. So what is interesting is the competition coming down the line, okay? Tesla's going to have their self-driving fleet eventually, okay? But what is interesting is is that Uber's not going to just be using them. They may be using them as well, right? But they're going to be a competitor. Tesla's going to have their own fleet. Uber's going to have their own fleet. But Uber's going to start using BYD cars in Europe, Latin America, and develop autonomous capable vehicles. Is the deal. They're going to use 100,000 electric BYD cars on its ride-hailing platform starting in Europe and Latin America. Latin America, the two companies announced just today. The companies will also develop autonomous capable vehicles for Uber's ride hailing platform, the press release said. The multi year strategic partner partnership comes despite the EU following the US this year in raising tariffs and imports on Chinese made electric cars. So Uber, they're making some deals, man, outside of Tesla. And just be aware that Tesla's not going to be the only game in town once that comes due at all and so all of these promises of future uh riches for lack of a better term just be careful out there because we're talking about a company right now with a valuation of three quarters of a trillion dollars 733 billion dollars i mean you know rivian is nothing like this company but you know jacob's been talking about this company a lot man and 16 billion dollars right you check out a company, now Ford, they've been the same price for 40 years, but Ford, and yes, Tesla's a technology, $43 billion, right? You jump over to a company like GM, GM, $50 billion. So how are you going to get to the valuation of $733 billion when you're going to have dramatic competition from those companies, Ford, GM, Rivian, and the likes of BYD? In terms of that self-driving, Uber's going to be in that market, man. They might be the biggest player of all. And you're going to have them teaming up, buying 100,000 BYD electric vehicles out there to make that and forming a partnership for autonomous, capable driving. It's going to be hard to realize that market capitalization, man. The robots, all that stuff, it's coming, but it's going to take a while, folks. All right, what else we got? Don't forget about Tiger Dollars, folks. This sale runs today, runs tomorrow through July, ends August 1st. You can get up to a 40% bonus on your purchase. We run these sales two times a year at a maximum. Next one will probably be after the first of the year, maybe a holiday sale. Something like that is usually what we run. So you're talking about five months out. If you're thinking about getting them, 
there's three levels to choose from. You spend 500, you get 600 Tiger Dollars. That's 100 bonus or 20%. You spend 1,000, you get 1,300 Tiger Dollars. So you get 300 free Tiger Dollars or a 30% bonus. And you spend 1,500, you get 2,100 Tiger Dollars. That's 600 free Tiger Dollars bonus to your account or a 40% bonus. And the way it works, whether you're on a monthly subscription, okay, if you signed up for my newsletter, Rocket Equities, you signed up for the Gold Report, Market Insights, my dad's letters, Basil Chapman, his opening call. He just did an outstanding program from 8 till 9. You signed up for any of Larry's live tradings, okay? Once you apply them to their account and use once, they're automatically used. You never have to do anything again, okay? You, uh, you're you in there. You spend the 1000 You get 1300 Tiger Dollars. Those 1300 Tiger Dollars get applied automatically to anything you do. If you're on a monthly subscription, a newsletter, a service, anything, they get used automatically. You have nothing to do. It's not like you have to apply them every month and make sure that you do it before your credit card is charged for your recurring service. They are automatically applied. They never expire. You're not charged a yearly fee where they erode slightly as some you know gift cards may do or something like that none of that you can transfer them to friends and family if you want to expose somebody to tfnn great time to do that as well check out those tiger dollars runs through tomorrow august 1st uh and that sale running right now on the front page of tfnn all right other companies out with their numbers we jump around pinterest out with their numbers and yeah, watch out. Down about 10% for Pinterest from 30 what? $37 yesterday to 33.52 right now for Pinterest shares. They um, third quarter revenue guidance a little bit on the low side. They're looking for 885 million to 900 million. The market was looking for just more than 900 million, so not a huge miss, but yes, nonetheless a miss and a miss in an environment where stocks are getting punished dearly when you miss. On the other side, Starbucks up about 4% on their numbers. So they maintain their full year outlook, even though they had net sales dropping in the third quarter. 9.11 billion, slightly below estimates of 9.24, uh, but they maintain their guidance. So it's about what are you doing for me in the future? And what they're doing is they're meeting the guidance that they have going on in the future. And then you jump over to Intel. So Intel's got problems, man. And they're trying to save themselves by laying off thousands of more employees. You pull it over. Is this the article? I think it is. Yeah, there it is, last night. So Intel, they've already laid off thousands, and they're going to cut thousands more. And they're doing it to try and fund some rebound in terms of research development to somehow compete with the NVIDIAs and the AMDs of the world. But how do you do it when you're you're having to lay off employees, right? Now, they have 110,000 employees, excluding workers at units that are being spun out is what they're talking about here. But nonetheless, they're going to lay off again. Yeah, as they're going to eliminate thousands of jobs to reduce costs and fund an ambitious effort to rebound from an earnings slump and market share losses. Now, that is dicey. When you start laying off people and spend and spending more without the promise of revenue coming down the line yet you're up by 1.3 percent you're up with the market right now but oh boy that is a tough chart in 2024 for intel shares you're at 30 54 we got lows out here about 25 dollars a year and a half ago all right folks stay tuned we'll come back we'll talk some forex we're coming back with teddy cakestad folks great interview as always we're looking forward to it stay tuned we'll be back with teddy are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. 
But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks, with the S&Ps right now up 68 points. That's up by one and a quarter percent. We take a look at the 10-year right now. ZN is the 10-year. And what do we got? We got higher price, lower year. The 10-year right now is sitting at 4.1 percent. We got some currency action. We got a Fed day coming up, a great day to talk to our man, Tendi Kegstat. You got the dollar index from 104.79 yesterday. We just got a 103 handle, 103.97. We're going to jump over to our man, Teddy. And folks, don't forget, you can always check out Teddy's outstanding newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report. You can get that for $97 a month. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You get an archive of his webinar out there as well, so check that out. we got a lot going on. And then he's got a couple of great webinars out there as well under the Services tab, Capitalizing on Time with Calendar Stock Options Spreads and Japanese Candlestick Pattern Stock and Options Strategies. Uh, both of those, $97 as well. Great value. And don't forget, you can get those Tiger Dollars first and then use them for even more savings. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning. It's Central Bank Day. All kinds of crazy stuff going on, huh? Yeah, I know. I was thinking, man, it always seems like I tell you we got wild stuff, and it is cool. We talk to you on Wednesdays, so every six weeks or so, we got a Fed day that we get to talk to you. Today's one of those days. We have the private payrolls out this morning, the employment cost index. Of course, you got tech stocks with Microsoft last night. Um, the markets are rocking today. But what do you what do you as a forex trader for those you know that aren't deep in the weeds of forex trading as somebody trading currencies on a day like today where we come into a Fed decision how do you approach a day like today and what are your thoughts as we come into that announcement this afternoon with the Fed? Well, normally typically um, the couple of days leading up into the Fed there's only a couple moves and then it usually dries up because they're waiting on the Fed. Um, interestingly enough, though, we've had uh, some a lot of numbers that have come out globally that impact currencies, especially some of the major FX pairs over the past couple of days. Um, and they came out all negative in the direction that these central banks don't want them to go. So um, you had GDP for Germany that was, was higher than expected yesterday. You have um, Australian CPI index um, yesterday also that was um, higher. So those are inflationary. Um, you know, so those are things that you have to start to watch again as far as those currency pairs and also see if it's reflective in ours. You know, um, the media is jumping on saying, oh, inflation is, is, is retracting. Well, no, we're month over month. We may be looking a little bit better than we were a couple months ago, but we're still really, really running at a high rate, you know. So as far as what the Fed's going to do today, uh, that 
we'll see. I think it'll probably start to slow down around noon, um, maybe 1130 or um, Chicago time, you know, an hour and a half before the Fed statement. I honestly do not think they're going to make a move today. I think they still want to see at least one more month of numbers that give that is encouraging going into the next meeting. And then maybe, especially because we have an election year, they may try and juice the market, you know, so that's a possibility. I think today it's off the table, though. Yeah, that seems to be a general consensus, at least for where the market is thinking, as in today. It's And I do find it so interesting that everyone is so sure it's not happening today, but is so sure that it is happening in six weeks from right now, um, which is kind of a dichotomy that if it's so sure that it's necessary, then why isn't there any ambiguity? But nonetheless, that's kind of where the markets position themselves, and the Fed doesn't like to shock them too much. And so we'll see. But today we get to the numbers. Um what do you think about the dollar yen moving back? I pulled it up this morning, getting ready. We got some action in the dollar yen again. Some pretty dramatic moves. Um, we're breaking yeah, through we, that 150 mark almost. We're right in trading basically at 150 right now. I got the chart up. Right. Well, it's Central Bank Day. Bank of Japan was earlier, and uh, we, I'm surprised that we got down to the 150 level. Uh, now this one may be overcooked. I would be very, you know, I, I wrote this in the report that like you got to be careful at these lower levels. You don't want to get caught short in the hole. You know, um, could it go down further? A absolutely, it could. Um, but you have to look at what's going on. Um, crude has is up nicely today. Let's just say that crude continues to rally for just a few days, and that just puts it into the middle of its range. That would be probably bullish to U.S. dollar yen. Remember that even if the dollar is getting crushed by a lot of currencies, typically the U.S. dollar yen will, on any given day, diverge. It's going differently, you know. So I would be. I would be a reluctant buyer. I'd wait for a solid buy signal. I would be careful with your shorts right now. I think anything, if we get back above 152, then um, we could maybe set a base and a range in that area from 152, 150, 150 up to maybe 154. Um, but down here at this 150 level, I, I just I think maybe you could spike down to 148, but it would be a spike. You know, so like I said, I'd be very careful getting caught short in the hole. Yeah, quite a pullback from almost 162 to 150 in the span of what? Poof, less than a month. That high was July 3rd. And, and, we're and still if in yields the bounce too, what happens if yields all of a sudden, you know, maybe we, it, just a profit taking uh, slide, sure. you know, yeah. that alone could give a rally to the US dollar yen by at least three, four handles with this volatility. You know, now look at what's going on with the pound today. There's no next to no action. They're waiting on their central bank. So that currency is not moving at all. That's one of the biggest ones in the in the dollar index, you know. But you have the yeah. Aussie and the and some of the other lesser currencies that spiked low today. They had some numbers that weren't good, but now they're riding that dollar weakness. Or I say it's a profit-taking move. You know, I, before I would say we have dollar weakness, I would say look at the extremes we've had in some of these FX pairs. You know, not the majors, but like the Aussie to New Zealand and things like that. And even look at what's going on in the yen. You know, now the U.S. dollar Swiss is hitting some serious lows. I think that could be that could still um, you know test some lows there, but I'd also be careful to get selling that one in the hole too, because that's been pretty volatile and that it could use a nice profit taking correction, you know. Yeah, I was jumping through, the, through those charts as you were talking about them. Pretty remarkable some of those pullbacks, as you mentioned, getting a little bit lofty maybe, um, and a little bit of a pullback. And yeah, that yen is quite a chart. You know, you mentioned the crude scenario and how it impacts it and i know you've told me i find it so interesting in terms of the demand the consumers america being a producer and so forth but for the the viewers we're always getting new viewers new listeners out there for those that haven't heard it could you walk us through just over the span of a minute or two in terms of how crude and versus japan versus the u.s and how that actually applies because i think it's so cool and it's a great example of how currencies man you know control everything almost and how they're determined by actual supply and demand and how that crude market contributes to the dollar and the yen Sure, sure. Well, the, one of the reasons that crude really impacts uh, Japan is, well, for the number one reason is they don't produce crude. They need it. Um, they're a major manufacturing uh, powerhouse globally. I mean, they're, besides being economic power, they are definitely a manufacturing power for the size of the country that they are. Their demand for oil is is very, very large. We, as their ally, also are their biggest supplier. Now, the thing is, is that crude is traded in petrodollars, which is the euro, euro, the U.S. dollar. So every time Japan buys 
crude from us, they have to convert yen to dollars to then make the transaction. Okay, so that means you're always going to have liquidity in that market. It helps to drive that. So that has a relationship right there for when they have pricing moves. Then you also have the fact that if the dollar versus the yen, what have you, depending on where it's at, crude become, can be more costly. Crude doesn't even have to move. And then if crude actually moves in the direction that also makes it more costly, well then how expensive does oil how expensive is oil for Japan? You see what I'm saying? So that's how that relationship becomes very a big factor. You know, um, countries that produce oil, we don't have that issue. I just say I thank you, man, because I love that definition, mm -hmm. that example, because I think it, you know, I keep it in my mind when I see other things happening as well. It's just a great example of how those two countries and how the commodity really drives some of that currency action. Teddy, I appreciate it as always, man. I look forward to talking to you next Wednesday. Have a great week. All right, Tommy. Take care. Take care. We'll be right back. With you. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. You get the Dow slipping to negative territory. Russell slightly in the red as well. Not the tech stocks today. NASDAQ 100 up by 2.3%. The S&P is getting carried higher by tech as well, up by 1.2%. We get the Fed decision. 2 p.m. Eastern time today. Press conference at 2.30 to follow. We have Meta earnings after the bell tonight. We have Apple and Amazon with their earnings tomorrow. We get the non-farm payrolls coming down the line on Friday. Uh, a plethora 
of numbers coming down. And yeah, you got crude, man. Quite the low yesterday, 74.59. We're at 77 bucks. And I love that example Teddy walks you through. It's just a great example of how currencies are driven by real world impacts of commodities. Who needs them, right? The strength of you being a producer of crude versus a consumer and needing those commodities and that's strengthening your currency versus weakening Japan's currency because what do they got to do? Teddy said it. They got to take their yen. They got to turn them into dollars and buy our crude. And so when crude goes up, that's going to help our currency. It's going to hurt the yen. And that can translate to many other factors when you break down in terms of situations like that, which I think is so cool. All right, we check out some of those companies for the numbers. Microsoft shares down about 1.6%. We'll see. The day is young, as our man Basil Chapman says. Meta out with their numbers after the bell tonight, 1.5% in the positive. Apple and Amazon, as I mentioned on Thursday. Look at Amazon up by 2%. You jump over to Apple shares up by 1.6% right there. AMD up by 10% on their strong numbers yesterday as well. Intel laying off thousands. They're up by 1.5% on that news. And with, of course, some of the other chip sector charging higher as well. Pinterest shares, not the case. Down by 10% for Pinterest shares. And um, what else do we have out there? T-Mobile with some action. They're up by 1.7%. Kraft Heinz up by 2.8%. It is interesting how many other companies are out with their numbers get lost in the shuffle. Marriott, down by 5%. Look at that chart from Marriott. Down from 260. Quite a pullback. 227, down by 5% on Marriott numbers. But tech in focus today. Don't forget about Tiger Dollars, folks. Today and tomorrow, two days left. Get over there. Get your Tiger Dollars. You can save on any newsletter or service at TFNN. Basil's coming up. He did his program live at 8 o'clock. He's coming up right now, folks. Stay tuned. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody.